Welcome to another Great Cal Basic tutorial. This is focusing on the PIC-AS capability of Great Cal Basic. So recap, uh, Great Cal Basic has been supporting uh, the PIC-AS XC8 toolchain for PIC-AS for about two years, but I've done another set of videos, which is this is the final part. You can download uh, PIC-AS if you want to install it alongside your Great Cal Basic installation from SourceForge and from microchip of course uh, but the one that we've tested is up on the microchip compilers folder it is a standalone installation if you re and if you want to do what i'm showing you you have to install pks as a prerequisite and in previous videos i've detailed how you actually do that okay so microchip recently released this, this pks um, it's called PKS. It's a new compiler, and uh, it essentially it replaces the decades-old MPASM uh, assembler and linker. So why we need PKS support? It's good for teaching aid. It's what I'm going to do today. You can do some debugging. You get support for uh, from microchip if you need it. Uh, in the case that where MPASM uh, MPASM you know, doesn't support that chip, or you've got a 64-bit operating system. So if you've got a 64-bit operating system, you will need PKS. So let's just um, take you into the demonstration, right? No, there's no mucking about. I am going to start up the um, MPLAB IDE, and I'm just going to start it up just to show you that that is running. Okay, all right. And once that's operational, we're going to create a new project inside of uh, GC code. So this is the GC code. This is the uh, Great Cal Basic uh, IDE, and I've got to, I'm going to create a program from scratch, and then we're going to import that into uh, MPLAB. Pretty simple stuff. I'm using first start .gcb. That's a GCB source file, and I am just going to type it in by hand. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a 16f17126. And it sort of helps me with that part because it knows I need that part. I mean, I'm just going to put in some simple code. Option explicit means I need to define my variables. I'm not using any variables, but it's always good practice. Okay, do loop. And all we're going to do is flash an LED and then take that do loop into um, MPLAB and see it work. So what I'm going to do is pulse out and uh, pulse out uh, an LED. I'm going to use port 8.1 for 100 milliseconds. And then I'm going to wait for 100 milliseconds. That is my program. And that is good enough for what we need to do. I pressed F6 to create a hex file. It has compiled it. How do I know it's compiled it? Because it says down here, assembling program using pick AS. I have pre-selected that inside of Edit Programmer Preferences, Compiler tab, I have selected my assembler as PKS. Okay, so I now know that I've got a source file and a hex file all produced by Great Car Basic. But we want to import this file into MPLABX. And how do I do that? We need to import the .s file. So if you press Function key F4 and you can see on the screen open s file and here is the dot s file that's been created by great cow basic and in here it has got our program it's got uh, our loop and our setting of the led exactly as we want okay now this is compatible source so here goes i am just going to take a copy of that location of that file uh, right hand mouse button on the tab of the name and copy the path now into the mystery of MPLAB X. I'm using version 6.05. Uh, previous versions still work, and I'm using PKS version 2.41. But here we go. New project, standalone project, next. Select the chip, pick 16F17126. Again, it offers it all up. Simulator is my tool of choice. Toolchain XC8 or PICAX or PICAS. Um, I should take PICAS 2.41. Next. Type in the project name. I'm going to give it the same name as the chip. And I am going to set that as my main project 
because it's the only one I've got, and say finish. So I've created an empty project. I have no source files. But what I've basically said is, here's a project, and it is a pick as project. So I need to insert a source file. If I open up my project, source files, right hand mouse button, add an existing item, and in my cut and paste buffer, I've got that .s file. And here it is, GC Studio, Great Card Basic, demos. First, start, sample, .s, select, put it in there. So I've now got a source file. I am ignoring all these errors down here because I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, okay, so we've now got a source file called first sample. Let me zoom in on that for us so we, we can see that. Now, how do I zoom in? Here we go. I am zooming in on there. Let me just pull that up so you can see it. First sample, there it is there. If I click on it, that is the source file that has been generated by Create Cloud Basic just now. I guarantee you. Okay, here's the date, for instance. Okay, into production, build domain project. This will just confirm to you that the um, project has been compiled correctly. As you can see, it has been built successfully, and that's been built successfully because we haven't changed anything. It worked in Great Car Basic, it will work here. Okay, now what I need to do is I'm going to go into debug, debug main project, and you've got discrete. So I'm going, okay, discrete bugger op debugger operation build for debugging main project. It will now recompile in the debug mode. And then I'm going to select debug discrete debugger operation. It's, for some reason, it's up oh, there we go. Uh, it was slow there. Launch debugger main project you can now see it's sitting inside of a program and it's actually inside of that .s source. It's there. So let's just add a watch in here. Let me just uh, clear all those down because they're not needed, delete all. I'm going to add in the Latte SFR. So if I come into here, I can type in just so you can see it or Latte. There we go. And I can open it out, and this is the actual port of Latte, and we're expecting this to flash or come on and off. And where it does that in the, in the program is at this location here, BCF. So if I just put a pause there, put a break in it by selecting it and press function key F9. And where does it set it here? There's the BSF there. I'll just put a break there. And what I'm doing is just using the uh, MPLAB capabilities of the deep of their own debugger and simulator so i am currently at the first line of the .s file which is the code that's generated by great card basic i can press f5 and it will run down to the that bsf and it says latte has been set something has changed and that there has changed to one i can now run the code again and the next time it stops after the delay it's changed to zero I can then run the code again, and the next time it stops, it set it to one. So we can see an LED. If that's the port, that's the port dot, that's the register dot bit changing as per the code specified in Great Cow Basic. Now, what you can't see in here is some of the um, comments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's stop the debugger. Let's put that on the right hand side of my screen, and we're going to put GC code on the why has it on there? You can't see what. There we go. They're side by side now. Okay. If I come into my source program and I change that to 10 milliseconds, I change my weight to 10 milliseconds, I recompile, you will see the source code in your IDE program change. Because look, it's changed here. Let me add the comments. I'm going to add the comments into the Great Cow Basic pro source program. Show basic code as comments in assembly. OK. Do that. Recompile. And it will change the source. And now we can see all our commands. Where here's 
pulse out and, and here is the weight 10 milliseconds so if we change that to five five and just I'll, I'll leave it at 10 recompile you'll see that the source is now changing so to rerun this debug discrete project uh, build for debugging main project once it's completed we should debug discrete launch and now we're in back in the program and we can now walk the program now here my previous break is no longer valid so i just need to clear that uh, clear that one done and here's the bsf which is set in the set in the uh, register uh, dot bit and i can walk the code press f7 it will go to the program start it will call init.sys so in its in its sys will set up the oscillator it will uh, then change the um, ansel on the chip it will then ensure that uh, the comparators are turned off and then it will set the ports to off then if we look here bcf we can look at our latte and see what happens and it's just cleared it it will do the delay and now it is running away quite merrily so now it's turning it on and off in our loop that we defined so what i've just done very simply is created a great cal basic source program created a project aligned to that inside of mp lab x imported the, the file and then i can walk it in in a proper debugger provided by microchip so in this case you can learn how the source code works you could see how the source code works you could recompile your changes to see how those work you can debug and put debug breaks in it you can attach it to a pick kit for attach it to a real chip and walk the code so now you've got the opportunity to really debug and really experience the low level outputs from great car basic integrated into mp lab uh, with that i'll call it a wrap enjoy